As I watched my belongings alongside Lucas's thrown out like yesterday's trash, Daniel's words echoed with chilling finality. If you don't like it, leave. Standing there, with our son's hand in mine, I knew this was no longer just about a failing marriage. It was about fighting back for our dignity. I am Evelyn Marshall, a 32-year-old working mother, navigating the complexities of what once was a happy marriage. Now, I stand at the crossroads of a life that seems to be unraveling at the seams. It's a story I never thought I'd tell, but here I am, reflecting on the journey that led me to this moment. My life, contrary to the turbulence now, began in a rather privileged manner. I was born into an affluent family, blessed with the comforts that wealth could bring. Yet, with a spirit yearning for independence, I chose to carve out my own path, determined to earn my living and not just rely on the legacy of my lineage. This decision, while empowering, set the stage for a series of events that would later challenge my very essence. Daniel and I met at the company where we both worked. He was there first, a man of charm and ambition. Our initial days were like pages from a fairy tale, filled with laughter, shared dreams, and a love that seemed to defy all odds. Our courtship was a whirlwind, and marriage felt like a natural progression, a testament to our love. Little did I know it was also the beginning of a slow, simmering discord. You see, despite our shared workplace, our careers took different trajectories. I, perhaps due to my upbringing or sheer drive, ascended the corporate ladder more swiftly than Daniel. This disparity, insignificant in my eyes, began to fester in his. While dating, it was a non-issue, even a source of pride for him. But marriage changed the unspoken dynamics. The man who once celebrated my achievements started viewing them as a mirror, reflecting his perceived inadequacies. When Lucas, our son, came into our lives, I thought it would bring us closer, solidify our bond. I took maternity leave, embracing motherhood with all its joys and challenges. Daniel's behavior, however, took a turn that I hadn't anticipated. His comments, initially subtle, grew increasingly bitter. Must be nice to get money without working, he'd say. His words laced with a disdain that cut through me. The financial support I appreciated turned into a tool for asserting dominance, a way to remind me of my supposed dependence during my leave. The workplace wasn't spared either. Being his superior on professional grounds, I had to maintain a delicate balance between being his wife and his boss. I endeavored to keep our work and personal lives separate, but the lines blurred, the tension palpable. Daniel's pride seemed wounded, not just by my professional stature, but by his perception that his own worth was diminished in comparison. In the midst of this growing estrangement, there was another factor, steadily poisoning the remnants of our marriage. Margaret, Daniel's mother. She was a formidable presence in our lives, casting a long shadow over our marriage. A woman of strong opinions and traditional beliefs, she saw my career achievements not as a matter of pride, but as a transgression of the roles she believed a wife should play. Her words were sharp, often loaded with a disdain for the modern woman I represented. Daniel should be the one leading, she would often say, a sneer barely concealed. A woman's place isn't above her husband. Her words, echoing through our home, only fueled Daniel's growing insecurities. It was as if my success was an indictment of his perceived shortcomings, and Margaret was the judge who passed the verdict. As Daniel's resentment simmered, our home life became strained. He started distancing himself from both Lucas and me. Where there was once laughter and shared moments, there now existed a cold, uncomfortable silence. I watched helplessly as the man I loved transformed into a stranger, his warmth replaced by a bitterness that seemed to stem from a deep well of dissatisfaction and hurt pride. Even as I tried to reach out to bridge the growing chasm between us, Daniel retreated further, often seeking refuge in his mother's company. Margaret's influence became more pronounced, her criticism of my role as a wife and mother growing more frequent and biting. Leaving such a small child and going to work, she would chide. Don't you have any maternal feelings? Her words stung, but what pained me most was the impact on Lucas. Our son, bright and perceptive, began to sense the tension, the undercurrents of discord that flowed beneath the surface of our family life. He stopped talking about his father and grandmother, his young mind perhaps unable to articulate the confusion and hurt he felt. 
In stark contrast, my parents provided a haven of unconditional love and support for Lucas. They adored him, filling his world with the affection and attention he so desperately needed. Their home became his refuge, a place where he could be a carefree child, away from the complexities clouding our own home. As I watched Lucas thrive in their presence, a thought began to take root in my mind. The environment at home, the constant tension and coldness, was not wanted for my son. The idea of leaving, once unthinkable, started to seem like a viable, even necessary option. But I was torn, caught between my commitment to my marriage and the well-being of my son. It was in the midst of this turmoil, as I grappled with the decision that lay ahead, that something decisive happened something that would change the course of our lives forever. The day that altered everything began like any other, but it ended leaving my world in shambles. I returned home from work to find the unthinkable. My belongings, along with Lucas's, were strewn across our yard, discarded like refuse. My heart pounded with a mix of shock and disbelief as I stared at the chaotic scene before me. There, standing with an air of triumph, were Daniel and Margaret. The disdain in their eyes was unmistakable. Daniel's words hit me like a physical blow. Since mom's moving in, we've cleared out your stuff. If you don't like it, leave. His voice was cold, devoid of the warmth I once knew. Margaret's sneer was equally cutting. We don't need a wife who doesn't care for her husband. Take your unattractive grandson and leave. Their words, cruel and unforgiving, echoed in my ears. But amidst the hurt and the shock, a sense of clarity began to emerge. This was not just an attack on me, but on our innocent son, who stood beside me, his eyes wide with confusion and fear. The realization hit me hard. This was no longer the family or the home I once cherished. It was time to leave. With a heavy heart but a resolute mind, I gathered our belongings, my hands trembling with a mix of rage and sorrow. Lucas, still too young to fully grasp the situation, helped quietly, his usual chatter replaced by a somber silence. As I packed, a memory surfaced, a detail about our house that I had almost forgotten. A lease agreement, with a clause that could turn the tables in our favor. But in that moment, I chose to remain silent. Let them believe they had won, for now. My focus was on getting Lucas away from this toxic environment. We're leaving, I said finally, my voice steady despite the storm raging inside me. Daniel and Margaret looked at each other, smug satisfaction in their eyes. Little did they know... This was not the end, but the beginning of my fight back. With Lucas in tow, I left the house that was no longer a home. The drive to my parents' house was silent, each of us lost in our own thoughts. As we pulled up, the warm glow from the windows offered a stark contrast to the coldness we had left behind. In that moment, I knew I had made the right decision. We were safe, we were loved, and most importantly, we were free from the bitterness and cruelty that had overshadowed our lives. The sanctuary of my parents' home felt like a balm to our bruised hearts. Their shock at our sudden arrival quickly gave way to an unwavering support that enveloped Lucas and me. In their embrace, I found the strength that I feared had been drained by the events at our former home. Lucas, ever resilient, adapted quickly to our new reality. The bond he shared with my parents was a joy to behold, their unconditional love filling the void left by his father's abandonment. Watching him play and laugh in their care, I felt a pang of regret for not having made this move sooner. His happiness was a stark reminder of what he had been missing. In the quiet of my old room, now our temporary haven, I contemplated our future. The decision to divorce Daniel became not just a necessity, but a resolve to protect Lucas and myself from further harm. My mind was set. I would ensure that Lucas would never again have to witness the kind of hostility we had experienced. The following days were a blur of activity. Meeting with a lawyer, a longtime acquaintance of my family, I laid out the details of my situation. He listened intently, his expression a mix of professional detachment and personal concern. We discussed the logistics of divorce, custody arrangements, child support, and the division of assets. While I was financially secure, thanks to my earnings and inheritance, I was adamant that Daniel should bear responsibility for his son. Returning to the house to collect the rest of our belongings was a surreal experience. The place that had once been filled with laughter and love now stood empty and silent, a shell of its former self. 
Lucas clung to my side, his small hand gripping mine tightly as we packed up the remnants of our life there. As we left, I took one last look at the house. It was more than just a building. It was a symbol of a life that could have been. But as I turned away, I felt a sense of liberation. The ties that had bound me to that place, to a life filled with discord and unhappiness, were now severed. With each passing day, the initial shock and pain gave way to a sense of hope and anticipation for the future. Lucas's laughter became the soundtrack of our days, and in his smiles, I found the motivation to rebuild our lives. We were starting over, but this time we were doing it on our own terms. The journey through the legal landscape of divorce was like navigating a stormy sea. My lawyer, seasoned in the ebbs and flows of such proceedings, was a guiding light. The primary focus was securing a fair arrangement for child support. While my financial situation was stable, I insisted that Daniel uphold his responsibilities as Lucas's father. The day we presented the divorce papers to Daniel was charged with tension. His reaction to the child support clause was a mix of disbelief and anger. Child support? After all the embarrassment you've caused me, he blustered, his voice a mix of indignation and shock. Margaret, ever the antagonist, chimed in with her usual venom. Why should John pay a dime to this ungrateful woman? Despite their outbursts, I remained resolute, my lawyer calmly explaining the legal obligations and the fairness of the proposed amount. Daniel's frustration was evident, but the realization that his professional reputation could be at stake if he defaulted on his responsibilities seemed to temper his defiance. As we finalized the divorce proceedings, I couldn't help but reflect on the irony of it all. Here was Daniel, the man I had once pledged my life to, now a virtual stranger, bound to me only by the legalities of our shared past and our son. In those moments, a range of emotions washed over me. Relief that I was breaking free from a toxic relationship, sorrow for the love that had once been, and a fierce determination to build a better future for Lucas and me. The divorce marked the end of a chapter in my life, but it also signified the start of a new beginning. As I walked out of the lawyer's office, divorce papers in hand, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It was the first step towards reclaiming my life and providing Lucas with the stable, loving environment he deserved. With the legal battles behind us, I turned my focus to rebuilding our lives. The support of my parents was invaluable, their love and encouragement a constant source of strength. Lucas thrived in their care, his laughter and playful antics a daily reminder of the resilience of the human spirit. As we settled into our new reality, I found myself looking forward to the future with a sense of hope and optimism. The path ahead was uncertain, but I was determined to walk it with grace and strength, for myself and for my son. The days following the divorce were a blend of relief and rebuilding. But amidst this new beginning, a revelation awaited. A twist in our tale that I had kept close to my chest. The house, the battleground of our final conflict, held a secret that was about to turn the tide in my favor. It began with an innocuous phone call from Daniel, now more a stranger than ever. His voice, laced with confusion and anger, pierced through the speaker. Evelyn, What's this about an eviction notice? Why is it in your name? I remember pausing for a moment, letting the gravity of the situation sink in. This was it, the moment I had anticipated. Daniel, the lease needs renewal, and I've decided not to, I replied calmly. The silence on the other end was palpable, as the realization dawned on him. Yes, Daniel, the house is mine, I continued, the words tasting of both victory and sorrow. It's part of the properties under my name, inherited from my family. The shock in his voice was evident as he processed the news. All this time, the house he believed to be ours was, in fact, a part of my heritage. The conversation that followed was a mix of disbelief, anger, and desperation. Daniel's tone shifted from accusatory to pleading, as the full extent of his situation became clear. Without the house, he and Margaret were, in essence, homeless. But my decision was firm. The house, a symbol of a past life, needed to be let go just as I had let go of the relationship. You need to find somewhere else, Daniel. We're divorced now, and you're no longer my responsibility, I said, a mix of sadness and resolve in my voice. The call ended with Daniel's protest still ringing in my ears, but I knew I had made the right decision. It was not just about the house or the divorce. It was about setting boundaries, 
about asserting my independence from a relationship that had become toxic. As days turned into weeks, I watched as Daniel and Margaret struggled to find a new place. There was a part of me that felt for their plight, but another part reminded me of the necessity of this harsh lesson. They had to understand that actions have consequences, and sometimes those consequences are irrevocable. Meanwhile, life for Lucas and me was taking a turn for the better. Our small apartment near my parents' house became a haven of peace and stability. Lucas's laughter filled the rooms, a sound that had become my favorite melody. In those moments, watching him play or listening to his endless stories, I knew that no matter the challenges, we would be all right. In the weeks that followed the eviction notice, the reality of their new circumstances began to dawn on Daniel and Margaret. They had been complacent, perhaps assuming that the comfort and stability they enjoyed were unchanging. But now, faced with the immediate need to find a new living situation, their world was thrown into disarray. For Daniel, the challenges were manifold. Not only had he lost his home, but also the stability and support he had taken for granted. His pride, already bruised from the divorce, took another hit as he struggled to come to terms with the consequences of his actions. Margaret, too, faced a harsh awakening. The vision she had of living comfortably with her son, free from the responsibilities she so despised, was shattered. The prospect of finding a new place, especially under strained financial conditions, was daunting. As for me, the aftermath of the divorce and eviction brought a sense of closure. While it was painful to witness their struggles, it also served as a reminder of the importance of self-respect and setting boundaries in relationships. It was a lesson in taking control of one's life, no matter how difficult the choices might be. Meanwhile, Lucas and I settled into our new routine. Our apartment, though smaller than the house we had left behind, was filled with love and laughter. Lucas thrived in this new environment, his resilience a constant source of amazement and pride for me. Our days were filled with simple joys, walks in the park, visits to the library, and evenings spent with my parents, who continued to be a pillar of support. In those moments, surrounded by the people who truly mattered, I found a contentment that had been missing for so long. The experience also taught me the value of looking forward, of not letting the past dictate the future. I began to focus on rebuilding my life, not just for myself, but for Lucas. He deserved a mother who was strong, happy, and present, and I was determined to be just that. The challenges we faced had not only tested our strength, but had also brought us closer. Our bond, forged in adversity, was now unbreakable. And as I looked at Lucas, growing and flourishing despite everything, I knew that no matter what lay ahead, we would face it together, with love and courage. The dawn of our new life brought with it a sense of renewal and hope. Each day, as I watched Lucas grow and thrive, I was reminded of the resilience of the human spirit. Our small apartment filled with laughter and love was a testament to our journey and the strength we had found in each other. Lucas's happiness was my guiding light. His inquisitive eyes, so full of wonder and joy, were a constant reminder of the innocence and purity that life still held. I found myself cherishing the simple moments, his excited chatter about his day at school, the quiet evenings spent reading together, and the weekends exploring the city with my parents. These were the moments that mattered, the memories that would shape his childhood. Professionally, I found a new sense of purpose and fulfillment. With the personal turmoil behind me, I was able to focus on my career with renewed vigor. My achievements, no longer overshadowed by the complexities of my personal life, became sources of pride and satisfaction. As I navigated my new reality, I also learned importance of self-care and self-love. I found solace in small acts of kindness towards myself, a quiet evening with a book, a leisurely walk in the park, or a coffee date with a friend. These moments of solitude and reflection were crucial in rediscovering myself, in understanding who I was beyond the roles of mother and professional. Most importantly, I became acutely aware of the impact of relationships on one's life. The support and love of my parents, the unwavering bond with Lucas, and the solidarity of friends who stood by me through the darkest times were my pillars of strength. They taught me the value of genuine connections, of surrounding oneself with people who uplift and inspire. As for Daniel, our paths rarely crossed, except for the occasional formalities regarding Lucas. 
the bitterness that once marred our interactions had given way to a detached civility. While the love we once shared was lost, I held no ill will. Instead, I chose to focus on the present and the future, on the life I was building for myself and my son. In the end, the journey I had embarked on, fraught with challenges and heartaches, led me to a place of peace and contentment. It was a journey of self-discovery, of learning that strength sometimes lies in letting go, and that true happiness comes from within. As I watched Lucas play, his laughter ringing through our home, I felt a deep sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the lessons learned, for the love received, and for the new beginnings that lay ahead. Our story was one of triumph, not just over the circumstances we faced, but over the doubts and fears that once held us back. And so, we moved forward hand in hand, ready to embrace whatever the future held, with love, hope, and an unwavering faith in the journey of life.